When the British colonizers arrived in Kenya, they slowly and insidiously took part in one of the largest land grabs to take place in Africa. Slowly but surely life changed for the African, and not for the better. Certain injustices came about such as forced taxation and forced labor. Soon after, the African had enough of it. The Kenyan became sick and tired of being sick and tired and they wanted, nay, demanded to have their land and freedom. And that is how the well-known Mau Mau uprising came about. The Mau Mau uprising was led by brave men and women, some of whom you've most likely never heard about before and certainly not in school. Let's take a look at five of these brave freedom fighters today. Musa Mwariyama was a Mau Mau fighter from the Meru people of Kenya. His father was a diviner. Mwariyama was the highest ranking Mau Mau leader who survived the uprising without being killed or captured together with 2,000 of his fighters. He was also part of the core Mau Mau leadership. So gallant was he that it is said that in one encounter with the colonizers, he lost 500 fighters and sustained seven gunshots, but lived to fight another day. He was quite intelligent too and told his soldiers to eat raw food so as to decrease body odor, as this would make it harder for his soldiers to be tracked by the British invaders. When the Mau Mau uprising ended and Kenya got its independence, the people who collaborated with the British got all the plum jobs while the freedom fighters were largely ignored. Musa Mwariyama was made an assistant chief and given 15 acres of land, which was a loan that he needed to repay. He died in 1989 of a snake bite. The next freedom fighter we're looking at is General Chui. He is remembered for the famous war of the river Ruiru. In an account that will have you thinking the Mau Mau were watching movies 24-7, General Chui disguised himself as an inspector of police. The Kenyan police, on hearing that they were being summoned by their boss, hurriedly went to meet him. The Mau Mau warriors were secretly called, using coded language by the general, and came swiftly to finish the job. He remarkably evaded death and capture until May 1956 when he was betrayed by a captured Mau Mau soldier. His body was brought near his ancestral home and burnt. General Maria Kanu was one of the freedom fighters responsible for a raid in Naivasha police station, in which 75 fighters took guns and ammunition badly needed for the cause. Part of the reason for the success of the raid is because Mberia had been held in that prison for a while and became familiar with the place. The freedom fighters also released many Kikuyu who were in detention. Mberia Kanu did not deal with his warriors harshly and no one disagreed when he was promoted to assistant field marshal. He was captured alongside his wife in January 1956 even though he had a chance to flee. He simply could not leave his wife alone. Mbaria Kanu died in 2004. Not every man and woman who joined the Mau Mau uprising was from the Kikuyu, Embu or Meru tribes. There was one Kurito Ola Kizio from the Maasai community. Not much is known about him but he had an army of about 800 fighters who fought from the Meleli forest. He was involved in the Second World War from 1939 to 1945 and continued to serve in the British Army but stopped doing so in 1949 when he opted to join the rebellion. Ola Kizio was sold out by two close allies in 1954. He was shot and killed, and his body paraded outside a hospital. There were many men in the Mau Mau movement and indeed they made up the majority of the leadership. However, there were women too and their presence was crucial. Some of them used their femininity and appeal to confuse and confound the home guards, that is, the Kenyans who were collaborating with the British forces. In this video, we are specifically taking a look at Muthoni Kirima, the only female field marshal in the uprising. Muthoni grew up on a settler farm. The settler used to grow pyrethrum and thus Muthoni and her family provided the manual labor. She took her first oath while she was in the reserves aged 22 years. She also introduced her husband to the movement. Muthoni was one of Didan Kimathi's informants. 
She fought alongside the men and after some time she was promoted to field marshal. She was an enthusiastic fighter and would travel many kilometers to get weapons from Ethiopia and she did this without getting captured. She remained in the forest until the fighters left en masse in 1963.